A person is sitting on a merry-go-round that is initially at rest. A 0.28 kilogram volleyball is sent towards the person, reaching the person's hand with a 20 meters per second horizontal velocity, as shown in this top view figure. The person hits the volleyball straight back at 15 meters per second. The distance between where the ball is hit and the axle of the merry-go-round is 1.5 meters. Find the change in angular momentum of the person merry-go-round system. This collision between the person merry-go-round system and the volleyball involves a fixed axle. When the person hits the volleyball, there must be a jolt at the axle. So the net force on the person merry-go-round plus the volleyball system is not zero. Therefore, the momentum is not conserved. However, whatever extra force at the axle would provide no torque. So the net torque is zero and the angular momentum is conserved. So the initial angular momentum equals to the final angular momentum for the person merry-go-round plus the volleyball system. Initially, the person and the merry-go-round are at rest, so they do not have any angular momentum, but the volleyball does. For the volleyball, we can treat the volleyball as a point mass, and uh, we know the mass and the velocity, so it can be convenient for us to use the angular momentum for the point mass equation. That's the perpendicular r times mv. The perpendicular r is the distance between the line of motion and the axis. So it's this perpendicular distance, 1.5 meters. So the initial angular momentum of the volleyball is 1.5 meters times the mass times the velocity. Angular momentum is a vector, so I have to be careful with the direction. The angular momentum of the volleyball before it's hit is uh, going that way, so it's uh, counterclockwise. So if I use uh, counterclockwise as positive, then I'll have to remember to use negative for the clockwise direction. After the ball is hit, we do not know the angular momentum of the person merry-go-round system. But we do know that the volleyball gets hit straight back at 15 meters per second. So the final angular momentum of the volleyball would be the perpendicular r times the mv. The distance between the line of motion and the axis would again be 1.5 meters times the mass 0.28 times the velocity and the final v is 15. But because the direction goes this way, so the final angular momentum of the volleyball is in a clockwise direction. Therefore, we have to make it negative. So to solve for the final angular momentum of the person merry-go-round system, we can move this one over that way and factor out the 1.5 and 1.5 times 0.28. And then on this side, we have 20. And then when we move this one over, we have plus 15. And this gives us 14.7. What is the unit for angular momentum? Since it is r perpendicular times mv, that would be distance meters times kilograms times meters per second. And then, of course, we can combine the meters there, so it's the kilograms meters squared per second. So the change in angular momentum of the person merry-go-round system would be the final angular momentum minus the initial angular momentum. So the answer would be 14.7 minus 0 kilograms meters squared per second. Another way to look at this problem is, since the total angular momentum of the person merry-go-round plus volleyball system is conserved, it also means that a delta L of everything involved is zero. So the changing angular momentum of the person merry-go-round system 
plus the changing momentum of the ball must be zero. So another way to find the changing angular momentum of the person merry-go-round the system is to find the changing angular momentum of the ball. And those two are in opposite directions. Because we know the initial angular momentum of the ball and the final angular momentum of the ball, we can easily find this.